Today, we're going to be talking about what hard drive you need for video editing. The least sexy topic ever. Welcome back, it's Sal and Bart here from Trio Stories and today we're going to be talking about what hard, hard, today we're going to be talking about what hard drive you need for video editing. Exciting times. It's gonna be fun. When it comes to videography and video editing there are so many exciting purchases to be made, cameras, lenses, computers, but hard drives are just not one of them. But it's definitely something that you need and also that you need to get right if you don't want the editing to become a painful process. Hard drives are life. Life for a videographer. <laughs> We're going to do our best to make this dry topic a little bit less daunting and give you the rundown of our experiences with hard drives when it comes to video editing. So for us the travel aspect is really important and for that we need it to be small so that we can take it with us wherever we go and you know slot it into our backpack to secure and safe from dropping and bashing it in and three we need it to be fast because time is money we won't beat around the bush the answer to our problem is an ssd yeah the most important aspect of the ssd is the fact that it has no moving parts so it's much less likely to be damaged through impact and this also makes them smaller and faster we have tested this on numerous occasions and um, yeah, they're still intact. So our choice of SSD is the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD and they are just sublime. This thing is tiny, like fit in your pocket tiny. It has the tiniest wire you've ever seen with also a converter for USB-C to USB. They are the business. It's also extremely rugged. It's got this silicon casing, which is waterproof, dustproof, and drop proof, and general basil proof. We would recommend going to, for a minimum of one terabyte. In our experience, shooting a day event can take anything between 300 to 600 gigabytes of footage, and that's if you're not working in 4K all the time. Add to that the project files, render files, and very soon uh, that one terabyte has been munched away by your editing. This is also really fast, which is crucial for video editing. It has a transfer speed of 510 megabytes per second for a lag-free editing experience. It's literally everything you need in the smallest possible footprint. It's not all unicorns and rainbows for the SSD. Unfortunately, they are very, very pricey. You are paying a lot of money per terabyte. The one terabyte SSD is 150 pounds, whereas the two terabyte is 260 pounds. One more thing, they are limited because of that in terms of the kind of accessibility to larger storage capacities. So with that in mind, the fact that you can only really reasonably get a two terabyte SSD, you are going to need something else for storage. You're going to want to keep those files for a significant amount of time after you film them. So for this, this is where the hard drive beasts come in. So our choice of desktop hard drive is the Seagate 8 terabyte expansion beast. This is 160 pounds. So straight away there, you can see the price difference. You're getting eight times the storage. Insert the quick maths meme here, like the woman. Either way, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to terabytes per price unit. The fact that this is a traditional optical hard drive is far less relevant when it comes to the safety because it's staying safely tucked away in your office. The write speed of this bad boy is significantly less than the SSD, clocking in around 140 megabytes per second. This is still workable for, for video editing without too much pain. Bob on. We also have this bad boy, which is the WD My Book. Duo 24 terabyte RAID hard drive. This bad boy can be configured into two different RAID configurations, RAID 0 and RAID 1. So basically it can act as two separate drives which are backing each other up constantly or one humongous drive of 24 terabytes. Basically this 
bad boy can fit so many files in it. We've actually named this beast as the final resting place and this is where our files go to spend their final days before being fully archived. So really this is the not quite final resting place. We should, we should rethink the name. Semi-final resting place. Semi-final, yeah. <laughs> we are not 100% sure whether we would actually recommend this. Uh, we have had some issues, but then WD actually hates us across the board. Niggly software, compatibility, reliability. It's, it's just not been smooth sailing. The reality is that external drives and storage is expensive. And when you're just starting out as a videographer or a video editor, you can't necessarily afford the best SSDs and the desktop hard drives. So you have to find a middle ground. And for a long time, we were using these. Our advice when it comes to these is go for about two terabytes. This is a good middle ground of storage capacity and price. Make sure that they are fast enough. 7,200 RPM is kind of a minimum for video editing at 1080p. Yeah, we got absolutely mugged off by this geezer called James Matthews, who recommended on his Instagram stories a WD product, no less. We were very tempted by the £80 price tag and it turns out it is not fast enough to edit 1080p video. This has not served as well. And the final bit of advice we have with these is to make sure that they come in some sort of rubberized, shockproof, dustproof, waterproof case. They are prone to breaking more so than like an SSD. So if you are going to have one of these, make sure that you can protect it as much as possible. Our final sort of anti-recommendation talking point is about the cloud hard drives. We actually have the Western Digital <laughs> cloud and again from the beginning it just didn't serve us as we initially thought that it would and especially for video editing it is just not fast enough to transfer those big files. Even with really fast internet, it's just the transfer speeds are not quick enough. It might be good for photography, but not for the big files that is video. Here are the things you need to consider when choosing an external drive for video editing. Number one, portability. The smaller, the better for travel, whereas the size is not that important when it comes to a desktop office solution. Two, storage. The minimum size that we recommend is one terabyte for video editing because those files just get big really quick. For a desktop hard drive, eight terabytes is a great size for backups and archive. Number three is speed. We would recommend that you get at least 7,200 RPM. Whereas when it comes to SSDs, you don't really need to worry about it because they are fast boys. And the final point is price. It is a balance between budget and investment. Bonus tip time. Oh. Bonus tip. It's always better to mitigate risk by splitting your files onto numerous hard drives rather than just one. Bonus tip number two is to always have backups. And if it's really important, have a backup of a backup. You can never have enough backups. If you've got some really important footage on one hard drive, make sure you have it copied to a different hard drive. That way, if one gets damaged, you've still got the other one to fall back on. Oh well. Thank you so much for watching. It's always a pleasure to have you here. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like. And please give us a subscribe if you would like to see us again. We hope you enjoyed the sexy bureau of us making hard drives saucy. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah? Yeah. Da -da. Da -da. Oh! I think, uh... That wraps it up, and we'll see you in the next one. Carol Baskin.